Shalige bekatos abrakatos kalevende gede balatos. Shabraka bakata baratos kade prende gebe lekoshia tabarako sadi. Embrake de gede beleko shabraka tabalada bos. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Sate la caparandos kodobre de gebe lekoshia ta. Make sure you are praying. Shkade baleke te prandos kade balako siyatabash. Krata baka parandes kade vereto shege te predi gede balakatos. Elanda sada balako shapra katos kade vrende gebe leke to shade geta. Shapra kata balaga da baratos kade vrende gebe leke to shada kratos igete. Prande ke paratos kala prata kata prata kade be leke te prate ke paka shoda prata kata. Embre ke te balanda shapra kas kata prata kata prate ke te be ke te prato koto shodos. Embre ke te balasha te praka tos kade balados yata. There's victory in Jesus Christ. There's victory in Jesus Christ over pain, over shame, over oppression. Shadege bekato pras kade baladus yata. Set your faith on fire as you pray in the spirit. Kembra daga baratos kalekre te bekete baladus yata. Every planting that is not of God must be uprooted today. Every sickness, every condition that is not of God must be uprooted. Sate pragate balakatosha frandas kavene katosh. Like paosh ke bababa bakata parakatosh kate vreti ke balatas. Embrakatosh alike brandes kadi balasha da prakatosh yata. There's victory in Christ. There's victory in Christ. Parasha kete balakata fratisa belegatia. Don't be tired. This is part of the miracle service. Sheke pakatosh kala brande ke baratos kati prati ka baratos yata. Enge de belesh shala kata fras kada balanda fras kade belesh. Kraga de belega de bakata pras kada baratos shala kata brandes kade belega tos. Rakata prate ke paros kade fras kase kade belesh. Manda prata ka parakata skade beleke to shalege pras shegede beleke te pranda ka parus kati balakos yata balatus yata imbrakata paratus kete prete kete beleke to yata shene beleke te paratus yata balakos yata. Embrakatos kalegretos katifranti ke palatos yata. It is my season. It is my season. In the name of Jesus, I am after the order of the sons of Isaka. It is my season. Declare, mante brakatos kalifranti ke bata. Shaliberegete brandes katifala kuriata paradus yata. Pray, pray, pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. He bash shake it ever like a tapa kata pras kata balaka tosh. Men te pratos kate kata para kata frete kate balaka te prato katosh. Prakete para kuski ata parika tosh yata. That which is my portion in the spirit, I obtain by faith. That is which is my portion in the spirit and in destiny. I lay claim by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Rakata balagata prate kete belekatas. Rakas ka prate kete belekash koto fronto gos koto prate kete belek. Rakete bas kala baraka tos kate frente geba. Lekete fras kete beres kate belekete. Shane mene kete prante sabalakata fras kate belekete. Shade kete berekos shalakatos. 
Imbra kata parada kata frata kata pera kata prasa kata lekata. Shapran teke parus kata pras kade balakatosh. Mende prados koto prakate balakata pros kade ya. Madi prakatus kiata balakatosa. Kapras kaparus kata friend teke parus kata lekata pras kata ba. Shapereske mende prata kata prata kata lekata pras teke tesh. Imbra kate parus koto pros koto prate kata. Soto pras Prende pelekete fras kete balatos. One more minute. Sekete pelekete paroda siata balakos. Shigete belegete praska de balakata parus. Shato prasko de brandi gete balakusi ata balada ba. Pray in your way to victory. Pray in your way to new dimension. Train your way to higher levels in the spirit. Train your way into testimonies. The manifestations of the speakings of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we're still going to pray one last prayer point before you'll be seated. I want you to mention everything that must live your life this night. Mention it by yourself as an act of faith. For those following, you can stand in for your children. Everything that is not in the word, everything that is inconsistent with the speakings of God, you are going to pray prophetically and declare that it lives finally. Go ahead and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Parasobakata. That barrenness situation, that situation of shame and reproach, limitation in progress, I declare and declare by the Spirit of the Living God, your end has come. Is someone praying? Thou shalt declare a thing and it shall be established unto you. Where the word of the King is, there is power. Decree and declare. Goodbye to shame, goodbye to reproach, goodbye to pain, goodbye to disappointments, goodbye to sin and not handling. There must be a performance. 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 Goodbye to stagnation. Goodbye to fear. Goodbye to oppression. Goodbye to yokes and curses. Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray Amen. Jesus the Son of God I believe in you Son of God, I believe in you. I believe. 
Sing it two more times from the depth of your heart. of the living God you were sent by the Father to us you represent the ministry of his power in our lives and tonight we agree and we believe that your power will be made manifest in our lives Amen. Lord over many situations in this place let tonight bring the solution once and for all Amen. And for someone who is saying, Lord, are you able? Let me speak to your life that this God is a mighty God and he will surprise you tonight. <laughs> to someone who is saying, I shouted amen before and nothing happened. Let me declare over your life, tonight becomes your night. To someone who is saying, I celebrated the hand of God in others and what their testimonies, but I am yet to receive mine. That seed you have sown, your harvest is coming this night. For someone who is saying, I'm even discouraged, I don't know whether to believe or not. In the name of Jesus, the mercy of God is speaking for you this night. And for someone who already saw this day in your dream and your vision, I declare that what you saw that is consistent with the will of God, tonight is the night when it manifests. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you all the praise. Indeed, let tonight be a miracle service. In Jesus' mighty, matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The name of Jesus is mighty. The name of Jesus is matchless. The name of Jesus is all-powerful. You will experience that name tonight. Amen. I just want to charge our hearts. My spirit is really fired up. Um, usually when God wants to provoke the anointing, he just imparts upon me the burden of many people's situations and once that comes upon me um, I am almost impatient as far as seeing the mighty hand of God manifest Psalm 30 11 and 12 do miracles exist does God really move is it possible that God is able to turn a man's situation around the Bible says thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. I love verse 12. I've read this scripture many times, but the Lord gave me a powerful revelation. He said, to the end that my glory will sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. He said, listen, I have been thanking you, but I want my results to also join you. He says, to the end that my glory, not just me, my glory, I long for my glory to also sing praises to you. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow, or you have taken away sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Other versions will say, you have turned my sorrow into joy. Listen, I want you to know and to believe that miracles do happen 
I want you to believe that God is able to intervene over the lives of people. I want you to believe, please listen carefully. I'm stirring your faith now. I want you to believe that signs and wonders are real. I want you to believe that new levels in the spirit and in destiny is possible. I want you to believe that God is able to make something that was not in your hand today to be in your hand the next moment. It is within the power of God. And I want you to believe that God is able to take something you did not want, that the devil is forcing in your hand to live your life. I want you to believe that the power of God can transport things from the realm where they are hidden to the realm where they manifest in your life. You have to believe this. The life that we have been called into is a supernatural life. You must believe that God is able to save. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. Salvation, everyone, someone who had been plagued with drugs, smoking and doing all of this. And she not only had an encounter, that encounter spilled over to all her loved ones. That is the power of God. I have seen the power of God in my life. I would be a liar if I told you that I've not seen certain dimensions of God. I have seen God's strange visitations. I have seen the power of God in this ministry. What God is doing today is a testament of his power. My assignment tonight is to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to the end that the power of God be made manifest in your life in a way that is unmissed. Takeable. There are things that happen and you can doubt. Maybe it was God, maybe it was this. But there are things that happen. You stand and you know that this one, it was only God. Hallelujah. But I want you to believe. Do you know, most believers, the only reason why they clap over the manifestation of miracles is just that the testifiers are before them. But if they were left to the question, can God do this? They may just laugh. Part of the advantages of being spiritual is that your faith becomes so built that you can believe God for anything. Listen, this is my Bible. You see, when the Bible speaks as a parable, it will tell you it was a parable. Are we together? When the Bible speaks as something that actually happened to men, to cities, the Bible will state it very clearly. Read the Bible and see the awe-inspiring, fearful things that were done by the power of God. They were not parables. By this time tomorrow, it was not a parable. The Red Sea parting. Forget all the arguments that, you know, all of these arguments that people bring around. Let God be true and every man a liar. How about a 25-year-old barrenness situation in the Bible? that was turned around overnight. How about resurrection? How about all kinds of miracles? Impotent folks, folks that were, were left for dead. How about demonic oppressions? One of the women that worked in the welfare department of Jesus' ministry, he had to cast seven demons out of her. How about Lazarus? How about the fig tree that would take from the earth and yet not bring fruit? He cursed it physically and by the next day it had withered. How about ravens that brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith? How about five loaves and two fish that fed 5,000 people? Sometimes it's not just a new job you need. You need a miracle of favor. As simple as that. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about Elijah running on barefoot and overtaking the chariots of Ahab down to Israel? Except you are not a Christian. How about people mocking God, keeping the ark of God close to Dagon and locking the door? They left the altars alone 
And by the next day, Dagon fell forward to the ground. What altar cannot fall? There was no man of God who was preaching and praying and saying, Dagon, fall. They just left two of them. How about angels that threw hailstones and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight? How about Saul who encountered Samuel the prophet and returned back meeting all kinds of miracles waiting for him? Do you not believe the Bible? There is nothing in your life today by the authority of scripture I tell you this. There is no situation here represented, no matter how complicated, that is worth making God scratch his head and saying, we've never seen this kind. We're talking about the God of the Bible. Is it your bills? Is it a medical condition? You've heard of God healing people here. Listen, I'm not inhuman. I understand that in the presence of painful situations, whether medical, whether financial, the truth is that these things can convey a level of pain that you can feel. If you are told you have cancer, or if you are told you have um, some kind of sickness, the pain is there, the growth is there, the lump is there. You, come, you came with someone who is mad, the madness is there. The person is misbehaving, you are seeing the person. If it's a demonic pattern over a family where nobody rises, you can clearly see it. But the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, unseen does not mean unreal. You can look at invisible things. Right now, while you are seated, you can look at the healed you, or you can continue looking at the sick you you can look at the you with an employment with dignity and honor or you can look at the you that is supposedly miserable and helpless the Bible leaves us with the liberty to be able to look at the things seen and the things unseen it takes the eyes of faith to see through the lens of Scripture that I may be sitting right now as a tenant or not even knowing where my rent will come from. But I know, I know, I know that there is a God in heaven who can turn things around. I may be sitting holding a medical report right now. Look at the lady. Three months, they said. After three months, you are gone. And it's been only God knows how long. I believe in Jesus. I believe in his power. I believe that he heals. I believe that he prospers. I believe that he delivers. I do. I believe that he's able to give speed. I believe that he's able to restore. Please look up. I believe he's able to bring laughter. I believe that God is able to save whole families within a moment. I truly believe it. I would be wasting your time here if I didn't believe it. I believe it. Onisha, Iyanu, you're the God of awesome wonders, tasted of your power. Onisha, you have shown me so much mercy. Listen, I am a student of the miraculous and I'm a student of the power of God. By the privilege of God's grace and with every sense of humility, I live my life learning Jesus, learning his ways, and that includes learning the supernatural. And any material I can find that can help guide my understanding to understand the realm of the spirit better and the operation of God's power, I would plunge and throw myself into it. I can tell you this. Please look up. In my life and from my study of scripture and even observing people who have worked marvelously in the power of God, there has always been two major ingredients as far as the administration of the power of God is concerned. 
please listen carefully number one you have to believe that God is able as simple as it sounds you can remain forever and never see the outstretched arm of God if you do not believe the Bible demands faith for the supernatural to be released the Bible demands faith let me add responsible faith there is irresponsible faith the faith that allows God and says God you have to do everything but there is responsible Bible faith father you have said this I have found it so there's no need asking is it your will I have found it in your word if you find it in his word and by the witness of the spirit it is unwise to be asking if it is his will it's unwise to ask whether it's his will for you to be blessed it's unwise to ask whether it's his will for you to have peace it's unwise to ask whether it's his will for you to be healed it is unwise and even unscriptural to ask whether it is his will for you to live long i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 11 said the lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end are we together the word of God is the basis of God's commitment to the believer I have taught you this and it matters that you find it please look up many believers cannot tell you why they think God will meet their needs if I ask the average believer now what is the basis of your confidence as to the fact that God is going to change this medical report as wonderful as it is to say oh Joshua Selman is around. I know he's a powerful man of God. You are not wrong, but that is not the scriptural basis. Have you found it? He opened the book and he found where it was written concerning him. Hallelujah. If you stand to fight poverty, the devil has a right through that spirit to say, I will not leave. He has a right to ask you, by on what basis should I leave this family I am tired it's not a wise answer I hate poverty it's not a wise answer the Word of God says ah I love the Word of God now when you bring what the Word of God says it, it brings an end to the discussion are we together now yes let them sing for joy they that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually the lord be magnified which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant end of discussion okay is this why i should leave this family i have lived here for 150 years turning every great person into a pauper now you can say my case must be different and the basis is that this is what is written i have found it now the ministry of the holy spirit is at work because the word of god has been revealed i am tired i think i don't like this this is unfair life is not treating me right those things are emotionally consoling but in the realm of the spirit they wait up they weigh absolutely nothing the realm of the spirit does not respond to pain or tears or emotions or sympathy please listen carefully the realm of the spirit does not respond to tears or pain or sympathy or emotions it responds to the word of god the word of god is the basis for action i am the lord that healed thee Therefore, this growth, what are you looking for in my body? In the name of Jesus, you must go. You must leave. Are we together? Yes. Why do you believe that you will not be mediocre? That you will rise and God will honor you? Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all the nations of the earth listen this scripture will never come to pass in your life if you do not find it and believe it next verse verse 2 and all these blessings the blessings are not few 
all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. I may not come from a family with any advantage, you will say, but in the name of Jesus, I believe that I am blessed. I believe that I am blessed. This is not a Pentecostal charismatic jumping up and down. This is a, a scriptural protocol to commanding the attention of God. You are too big to agree with God. You will never receive anything from heaven. I believe God. I believe God. In the name of Jesus, a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, none shall hurt me. With my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. Are we together now? That kings shall entreat my favor. I believe it. What does it mean to believe? To believe does not mean to merely agree. Uh -uh. To agree with God and meditate upon his promise until you find the participatory role that you have to play until you find your part in that faith equation you are not believing properly most people will tell you i am believing god i am believing god to prosper me and you tell them okay so what is the basis of your believing god the word of god says i will prosper wonderful what else that's it God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Respectfully, that will not work that way. No. God said it, you believe it, you find out what he said you should do to activate what he has said, and then you obtain grace to do it consistently. That is what settles it. So if, for instance, I tell someone in the name of Jesus be healed, and you are having maybe a headache or whatever it is, or a growth, and I said, do what you couldn't do before as an act of faith. And you say, listen, I know this. I'm already feeling the pain. The pain, it is, is partial paralysis or stroke or something wrong with my back. Believe me, even if it were Jesus Christ who stands here and is done with his preaching, you will be surprised that we will share the grace and you will leave and nothing will change. Just because the power of God is present does not mean it will heal you. The power of God is present to heal those who believe that God is able to heal them. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Apostle, my own is that I need a prophetic declaration over my life. I feel like there is a closed heaven over me. Now when the word of God comes, in the name of Jesus, may your heavens be open. You casually say amen and then you just laugh at yourself. And the devil says, thank God you know that nothing will happen. And you guess right, absolutely nothing will happen. Even if you fall under the anointing, you will be surprised that you will stand up and nothing will change. Falling under the anointing is not the condition for reception. Believing the word of God is. Those things are just effects of spiritual activities happening to you. Every one person who stands here to testify had to do the job of believing at a point lord i believe you you will hear them say this some of them had dreams some of them had visions but they had to take responsibility to say i believe but thou O oh lord art a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Hear me? The day you actually believe that you will never be down in life, that is the day you leave the ground forever. The day you really believe it that it becomes spirit and life. The day you believe that it's not in your prophetic destiny to be poor. I'm not talking of this canal I will be rich with a heart that does not love God. I'm talking about a heart that knows the role of poverty in destroying God's purposes and the role of prosperity in advancing the purposes of God. There is something about conviction. Look on us. And he looked, expecting to receive something. In other words, if Peter and John, they walked away without a miracle, 
that man would have responded to them and said I am lying down crippled but two of you are false prophets because I believe you the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive Peter said silver and gold I do not have he said uh-huh I'm still listening what do you have and then he says such as I have you know Peter's humility was very clear he admitted that there were some things he did not have are we together but he also acknowledged that there were some things that he had I submit to you by the grace of God we may not claim to have everything but there are some things we have as far as addressing your situation is tonight there are some things by the grace of God that can put an end to that shame and reproach yeah. hallelujah when you read that scripture the Bible says he said in the name of Jesus rise up and walk I know the Bible is written in summary so you would think that in chapter 3 and verse 6 he just jumped up no he remained there in the name of Jesus rise up and walk Peter was surprised John was surprised the man was surprised there was no miracle yet the power of God was still there yet the Word of God was there the same way it has happened since March by God's de design you were not supposed to be writing that prayer request again but there is something you did not do in March there's something you did not do in April there's something you did not do in May I pray you do it this night Are we together and the Bible says give us verse 7 that he took him by the hand and lifted him up and immediately when did his feet receive what part of his body received <laughs> that means every part of your body is a receiver depending on your action it was not just his hand that received his ankle bones received your head can receive your heart can receive are we together now he lifted him you would think the Bible says and his hand no the power of God made contact or the the, the apostles hand made contact with his hand but the miracle was not needed at the hand his ankle bones received his finances received the situation that means I can speak over your life it does not matter through what entrance the power of God gets to you the most important thing is that it must go to the area that needs to receive strength receive life I can declare over your life in the name of Jesus be blessed and for someone that word will go straight to your finances because that is the area that needs strength for someone that area it will go and scatter an altar somewhere that will not let people rise his ankle bones receive strength and the Bible says he leaping stood please give it to us he leaping stood up the man made efforts the Bible does not tell us whether he still felt pain as at the time he was standing but it's safe to assume that he still felt pain but the Bible says the man leaped and stood and immediately he walked the dynamics of Bible faith it will always take faith to activate the supernatural the supernatural does not just work because God is able and God is powerful you need faith hallelujah for someone on hearing a prophetic word about increase the Spirit of God will speak to you go and register a company by tomorrow you may not have enough money for business but go and look for a lawyer register a company by faith when we say lay your hands it's not a ritual you lay your hands there I'm feeling this pain but in the name of Jesus you are about to leave this breast lump you are a devil you must leave ignore the pain and believe in Jesus you are looking at the things that are unseen and the power of God will come through the channel of your faith and all of a sudden you will hear testimonies testimonies 
just like a dream he said you have turned my morning to dancing this is the dynamics faith 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 in Jesus Christ you must believe you must believe and you must act pay attention to instructions when the anointing of the spirit is in a place because your miracle can be one instruction away shout Jesus you just feel ah, what is it about Jesus I said it this morning under what kind of influence are we together imagine if Joshua told them shout over Jericho Tehillah that sound and they said listen we are not stupid people do you know what it means to go around seven times Jericho was not like a small shop that you will go around going around in the hot sun seven times and he said with every energy you have shout let me tell you the truth you will be lying to imagine those people did not imagine themselves being stupid if at the fourth or fifth time the fence started cracking that will help your, your faith because you say wow the gate is opening and let's shout anybody will be motivated spiritual things look dead even to the last second Naaman go and bath seven times number four he came out I could imagine Naaman looking at the slave girl with anger I will kill Elisha if after seven times I actually come out of this water you know what it means to be leprous and yet imagine a very dirty river number five he came out nothing number six he came out nothing and then he went at the seventh time the power that had always been there rested upon him as soon as he came out the Bible says his skin was like that of a baby are we together how about Elijah and the prophets of Baal Elijah said call upon Baal and they called from morning till the time of the evening sacrifice and then Elijah put the altar Elijah put the altar together and then he called upon the Lord you thought that he would not doubt in his heart you are joking he was human God please show up and you thought you would hear a sound and then all of a sudden like it will happen to you now in the name of Jesus Christ how many seconds does it take a text to enter your phone that is how fast it takes the power of God to get to your life science has shown us how fast the power of God can be that I can send the text now and in a fraction of a second someone's phone will be beeping in the US in Europe if 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 technology can capture the realm of the spirit and make it so scientific can you imagine that I can send you a text and after 10 seconds if you've not received it I become impatient because it's not supposed to be that long how much more the power of God see some of you have waited too long you, you have not been angry enough that's why believe what I'm telling you you send an SMS to someone and after 10 seconds it's not gone you send it again you send it again after one minute five minutes as short as five minutes you've lost patience because the accuracy should not allow for that kind of thing you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh the covenant keeping God Yahweh the covenant keeping God listen I have taught you and I understand there is the law of process where God leads you gradually sequentially into your destiny 
but there are many things that are demonic and there are many situations that have not manifested because of the irresponsibility of the saints. You are not yet tired of that situation to place a demand. I want you to use this text example right now and say, Lord, a human being not even born again sent an SMS with a phone that was made scientifically and in a moment it got to me. What makes you believe God cannot reach you? When they called you this morning, did your phone not ring? Out of them, were you, were you the only one being called? Many people were called, but your line, it was distinct to you. There may be thousands of people here and following all over the world, but I want you to assume you are the only one in this place. That is the spirit of faith. It's not being selfish. Lord, I thank God for my brothers and sisters, but I came here for you. Give me an encounter. Your favor is real. Let it speak over my life. I'm tired of this level. The devil will give you excuses. Who knows you? The devil will give you excuses. Are you not holding a medical report? The doctor who treated you, is he not a Christian? I want you to stand by faith and believe. You have to make up your mind. I'm tired of this situation. It must let me go. In the name of Jesus. Tired of tears. Tired of shame. Tired of reproach. Hallelujah. Now listen. So I told you there are two keys to experiencing the power of God. Number one is your faith. Number two, listen carefully. Number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There are many times people do not receive, frankly speaking, not because they do not have faith, but the vessel that God is using has not built capacity in the spirit through death to the flesh, through the sacrifice of consecration, through impartation, through intelligence, to rise to a level of the anointing that can solve the problems of the people. It's true. Hmm. Listen. There are different tanks, tanks, T-A-N-K-S, tanks that we put water. We have different calibrations to them they are small tanks medium giant tanks if you have a small tank it can only serve a few people so the problem is not the the tap the problem is that the tank that is connected to the tap are we together can only give its limit is that true so there are times the problem is not the tap the tap is ever ready to be opened but the major problem is the tank the capacity of the vessel is small, not the capacity of God. Remember, I taught you that spiritual resources flow from God through man, through a vessel. That is the reason why God continues to work on us vessels so that our capacity is enlarged. So that if there is anything that your level of spiritual development could not capture from heaven to release to God's people, by the next time you show up, you would have grown an expanded capacity. It means that there are many men of God and many spiritual leaders that God will judge them. Because God will say, someone's healing. This person kept believing. But the problem was not the person's lack of faith. The problem is you as the man of God refused to grow in a greater level of the healing anointing so that you are able to solve the problem. I have told you that the anointing works like money. If you have a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars is about 69, 70,000 and you have 70,000 Naira. If someone is hungry, you don't need to be afraid because for a, 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 a regular, you'll be able to buy something within that amount. But if what the person needs is a vehicle, you will need maybe five million plus and the rest to get the car. Now, you have money, but your money is too small relative to the need of the person. Are we together now? Yes. 
Let me illustrate something and I begin to pray. Let me have, who can I have? Come, my friend. Any gentleman? The gentleman on black. Don't worry, you sit. Come. Let me use him. Watch this. Watch this. Now, let's assume this, my dear one here, came with all kinds of issues. Financial issues. Please look up. Headache, for instance. Are we together? Family problems. Yokes. Curses. He came to Koinonia for miracle service, expecting to receive. Now, this guy is full of faith. He's believed God and he's believed God's servant. So he's done his own part. Are we together now? Every problem in this man's life has a dimension of the anointing that solves it, just like money. Are we together now? So let me just use money for an example. I hope you will not be confused. Let's assume that, just for example, it takes 1,000 naira worth. It, do, do you understand what I'm teaching you now? 1,000 naira worth of anointing, just for want of expression. And it takes 5,000 naira worth to heal his hand. Are we together? To deal with the causes and the yokes. The administration of it now may take maybe 1 million naira worth. And to speak favor in his life, may require one billion naira worth watch this if my worth in terms of anointing is five hundred thousand, and if i pray for this guy it is only the condition that is below the level of anointing i carry that will be solved so i can pray for him be healed cause his leave financial doors be open favor come he can't get favor it takes one billion now, I've spoken what is above my level of grace. The Bible says, minister according to the measure of grace. That means you have to know what you carry and what it can do before you speak. So I prayed over five things in the man's life. He will return with a testimony. The headache was healed. What about the financial situation? Nothing really happened. How about favor? Well, we are still believing God. Who failed here? The vessel. I will be too proud to admit it usually. Just give a flimsy excuse. It's not God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Now watch this. If I go and stay in the place of prayer, in the place of the word, and through impartation, I now grow from 500,000, and by next miracle service, I return with 50 million. You see that? Worth of anointing or dimension of the anointing. Because of that size of the anointing, there are things I will not even pray for. You see that? Immediately, they are too low relative to what you carry. It will leave, believe me. Now, many things will change in his life except that favor dimension. Because favor will require that one billion dimension. I will go back again. Otherwise, what is the value of growing in grace? I now grow in grace. Learn from those who have gone ahead. Receive impartation. Stay with God. And then I rise to a point where I am five billion worth of anointing. Now, let me show you how I will, I will be a blessing. Let's assume this guy were meeting me for the first time. And all his problems are less than one million. In a moment, in the name of Jesus, that will be it. So a man like Baba Deboe can stand and say in the name of Jesus. You now see what is happening nothing much but the problem is not just the speaking it's the size of the grace that is addressing the issues <laughs> apostle what are you saying is this scriptural acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus why would jesus need to be anointed how god anointed jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about on the strength of that lavish anointing. There were some things that the disciples could not do at some point in their lives. But then eventually when they encountered power, listen, did you see the progression even of Peter's life? When Peter got filled with the Holy Ghost, his shadow could not heal. He was standing near the guy at the beautiful. He had not gotten to that size of the anointing. So he had to prime his faith and hold his hand. But Peter got to a point where people lined up. He did not speak. It was his shadows. Yeah. 
if it is true that we are growing in the spirit that means a testimony that did not happen to you last month should be able to happen to you this month so, that is why it is unfair and dangerous for a man of God to remain at the same spiritual level whereas activities just keep happening because you will be wasting the time of God's people and sooner or later they will discern that you have reached your limit spiritually they will respect you but they will leave you and go and look for what works members and human beings are not stupid they God has put this spiritual instinct in them they can gauge the size and the level of what anointing is confronting their situation. And when they know that this situation that is plaguing this family is 10 billion naira worth of the anointing, you come with 250,000, they will respect you just so that you will not um, feel bad. But they will quietly go and look for solutions. There were certain things I would never have seen in my life years ago. Because the level of grace that comes through knowledge, through impartation, through understanding, through encounters was not there to that degree. But thank God growth is a possibility in the kingdom. The version of you that started this year should not be the version of you that came. It will be evil of you if the, or evil of me if the level of anointing I came with last miracle service is still the same level of anointing I'm coming with now. What then was the need for putting a new one? But thank God that grace can be multiplied. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God empowered Koinonia. How God anointed Joshua Selman with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all you see when we know this are huh, it will grant us the humility to keep growing regardless the results we see this is one of the most uncomfortable messages you will hear as a man of God because it puts a lot of the responsibility over people's lifting on you because most people believe that they left their home to come is enough faith that they defied the rain and stayed from morning. There are people who were here as early as 7, 10, 12. What demonstration of faith is greater than that? Let me assure you tonight that you will not be disappointed. I'm taking out time to charge your heart because I want us to take all the limitations away so that we will allow the power of God to step in. You may be like this gentleman. You came with several prayer requests. You came with several needs. Please have no fear. God is alive. And he will visit you at the point of your needs. Let me talk about something one more minute. How do you know God has visited you? Number one. By faith in the integrity of his word. And then number two, by a performance. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her. So it does not just stop at believing. How do I know God has visited me? Number one, I believe based on the integrity of his word. But number two, I believe because there will be a performance, a manifestation. How do I know God has healed me? Number one, because I know that he heals. But number two, because I know the pain has gone. Not just by faith as we call it. Gone, like it's gone. How do I know the grace for favor has come upon me? Number one, I believe it because the word of God says it. But number two, my phone begins to be full of mysterious calls from people. Where are you? There has to be a physical performance. Hallelujah. Thank you. How do I know that the barrenness situation has gone? Number one, because of the integrity of the word of God. But number two, my stomach will start protruding. 
Is that true? You are a woman and your stomach will protrude and they will tell you it's a child here, yeah, not that it's a growth. And after nine months you give birth. Now you know the word of God has come. How do I know God has visited my finances? One, because the word of God says so. Number two, because supernatural wisdom and favor comes upon me. The anointing will make me start thinking in a certain way. The anointing will manage my belief systems to start thinking consistent with the way of one who produces wealth and then programming a climate of favor around my life. How do I know speed has arrived in my life? Because the word of God says so. But number two, be between now and the end of September, I will see God do things that he did not do in the last five, six years together. Do you believe what you are hearing? How do I know my prayer requests have been answered? It's not just because Joshua Selman knelt down and spoke over it. No, the word of God says so, one. But number two, I keep a copy of what I submitted here and watch the faithfulness of God. Lord, I agreed for a job. And by Monday, someone calls you and said, I'm sorry, I would have given you since July. I forgot. Now you know the book of remembrance has been opened. You now take it. The Lord spoke to me to pay your rent for three years before you get established. Now you know favor has arrived. How do you know that a new anointing has come upon your life? Number one, the word of God says so. But number two, you will begin to see results. Results that were not in your frame of reference before now. As a man of God, you begin to see results. Supernatural manifestations of the power of God. Dramatic things that only God can do through men. Koinonia, I pray for you. May this be your portion this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, commanding results in the kingdom is not rocket science. The grace of God has demystified these things so that the saints will understand. Hear me, God is glorified when we rise. Give us some 30 again, now you will understand. It says that my glory will praise you. I can praise you even without results, but I need my glory to praise you. Thou has turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou has put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. Verse 12. It says, give us verse 12 please. To the end that my glory. That means as you are worshipping, your car outside is also worshipping. As you are worshipping, the baby is also worshipping. Your results should also worship God. This is why we are here tonight. And if you are coming here for the first time, you are welcome. You will know that you came to a place where God dwells. Because my God will surprise you this night. So what is God doing tonight? One, he's healing. Two, he's bringing deliverance. Three, he's bringing breakthroughs. Number four, he's bringing restorations. Do you believe this? Number five, I believe he's opening the book of remembrance. Listen, God never forgets, but men can forget. And it is equally dangerous when men forget you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the keeper of Israel, he neither sleeps nor slumber. Look at the gentleman who gave his testimony. I hope when you listen to these testimonies, you are learning from them. Now the man told him, I have signed the contract. And yet the man forgot. The same way somebody thought that it was you, he blessed and forgot. He must remember this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere your portion is hiding, 
in this city and in this nation in the name of Jesus if you believe it I declare over you by the God who called me he must look for you in the name of Jesus please sit down I believe this oh I believe this let the atmosphere of faith help that lady under the anointing please participate in everything we are doing tonight don't waste your time you came here since morning don't just watch others and clap when we're saying shout Jesus when when the power of God is moving touching people don't just be passive and you are watching and saying wow it was a powerful service that's not what you came to do this is not a cinema this is not a museum you came because there are some things that must give way you came because your ministry, the mockery and the shame around your ministry, as though God did not call you. You came to encounter grace that will rewrite the narrative of your ministry. So if you're a man of God, a woman of God, don't sit down and see the anointing is not available for you to receive. If ye being evil, know how to give good gifts. God is a giver. Did you hear that? God is a giver. Let me give you one prayer point. Father, my portion in life and destiny, my prophetic portion, I receive it in the name of Jesus. It must gravitate towards my life. Please open your mouth and pray. That portion of grace allocated for my efficiency. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Let me add one more prayer point. Father, let me enter my season of results that my hand will hold something. A season of results. Please open your mouth and pray. My season of results. Let my life capture your faithfulness. Everywhere pray. You are following online. Pray. A season of the performance. Tired of being at the same level. A testimony give me a testimony give me a testimony I need a consolation to my Christian experience in the name of Jesus put a new song in my mouth a pray a song of praise to our God that many will see and fear and put their trust in you let my life carry the evidence of being a child of God let my life carry the evidence of being a favored one let my life carry the evidence of carrying the mantles and the graces that you have given me hallelujah hallelujah listen we do not serve God just because of results we love him more than that however however there are many people whose knowing God depends on your results are we together 
when Peter stood before the Jerusalem council in defense of the miracle that happened, the Bible says the man who was healed was standing with him. It is one thing to declare Jesus based on the authority of scripture, but it's one thing to declare Jesus in the presence of your evidence. You are a true witness when your evidence is there. You can tell people God lifts and they will believe, but when you are lifted and you say God lifts, it will be stupid to doubt you. This is what I'm praying because see, many of you, you're promoting the purposes of God is not efficient because the evidence that you need as a man of God, you can't keep telling people God opens doors. They keep shouting amen indefinitely. They are human, they will be tired. Do you mind praying this prayer one more time? Father, in the name of Jesus, let my life command an evidence. The proof of your faithfulness seen in my life. The proof of victory seen in my life. The proof of favor seen in my life. The proof of intimacy with the Holy Spirit seen in my life. in my life sin in my life give me a change of story in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we're going into the ministry of the Spirit right now where God is going to be visiting us. I want you to believe. When it's time to pray for the sick, I want you to open up your heart. You came with a sick person. When it's time to receive that miracle, I want you to receive with all your heart. And when we instruct you to check yourself and you find out the power of God has touched you, you make your way very quickly here and will be ministering deliverance. Listen. The word of God is the conveyor of his power. So for every word that comes like never before, receive it with understanding and intention. I know what God has shown me about the kind of people he's raising. I know what God has told me as we pray preparing for this. Many of you have traveled from across literally nations across the globe, several regions within this nation. God will not gather you like this to waste your time. Hallelujah. And as I begin to minister in the spirit, don't worry, just allow me to do my crazy things here. I'm walking with the spirit. The way God walks, by now you know, it does not make sense. But provided is consistent with his character and it produces results. Sometimes the ways of the spirit is like the way of the wind. You cannot tell where it cometh and where it goeth. But one thing you cannot deny is the signature of God's power upon it. There are prophetic actions that will come. Sometimes they may not make sense. Be flexible and be childlike enough to believe the Lord. Hallelujah. This is koinonia. Please stand, just remain silent. I'm not making an altar call. It is the power of God that is going to be moving. And please ushers, now let me just say this, whether you are an usher or not, our ushers are limited, there are thousands of people here and all across. Um, anyone who is under the anointing close to you, if I ask you to bring them, please just bring them out so that we'll hurry up. 
it is my prayer that everybody will receive maximally within the limited time that we have. I don't intend to keep us too long, but I want that God will grant us grace to do so much. Hallelujah. When God speaks like this, it is because there is something that he's doing. Hallelujah. Are we together? So after the first shout, there will be a shout of a lady. And then after that, the power of God will start moving to specific people. And what I am seeing in the spirit, I'm just seeing like a cloud about to rain. And that's what God is doing to these families that he's single-handedly bringing out. Bring them out now. Please bring them out. My restorer has won my battle for me. My lifter has won my battle for me. The God of lifting has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man, he's won my battle for me. My restorer has won my battle for me. My redeemer has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Let me tell you what is happening to these families that God is singling out. I saw a cloud and the Bible says if the cloud be full of rain, there is a strange visitation to bring testimonies. The power of God is still moving on those families. You're not shouting, you're not doing anything. Just this is the instruction God is giving me. It's impossible to stand if the hand of God is upon you in that family. Let captivity be turned around. It's a miracle service. God is bringing to end captivity. Opening the gates of heaven. Ah, it's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. It's coming to an end. Surely there is an end. It is coming to an end. It is coming to an end. Shame coming to an end. Reproach coming to an end. God of lifting has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. The God of favor has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Hala shalaka kabala katos, krata gete belego siata badas. I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man. Number two, tonight's miracle service is very strange. I'm seeing a bunch of keys that is being handed over to people in the spirit. Now hear me. It is coming like fire on people's hands. I want you to bring them out. Key stands for access. There are people who have not been able to access certain dimensions. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out. Access. God is giving you access. Access to realms. Access to things. Access to treasures of your destiny. Among our viewers, 
the Lord is showing me someone you are following from the US you are sitting on a couch you and your children girls in the name of Jesus Christ you are part of those that God is giving this access to by the power of the Holy Spirit I am praying for you right now as God is doing it here listen without a key even when there is a door it will not open by this key that God is giving he's swinging open doors I'm still praying again the fire of God is still visiting people opening doors by this key that is given very strange manifestation of doors opening for you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very strange how God is operating tonight. I'm looking in a vision and this is what I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant and lying down like on a bed in a labor room, but she's not giving birth. I know this is a prophetic statement. There are some of you after nine months a woman should give birth but there are some of you spiritually financially pregnancy actually happened but now to give birth to the testimony something is stopping it i'm going to pray for you the power of god is coming on you it's time to give birth prophetically giving birth to dimensions of grace and i'm praying right now in the name of jesus everyone who is part of this vision i saw of this pregnant woman in the name of Jesus I stand as a prophetic midwife I command your prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery right now by the spirit and the power of God prophetic delivery right now now please hear me people usually run when I pray for speed but people are going to be running but for a different reason now it is not just for speed I want you to be sensitive it is not just for speed it is still the same running but the spirit of God is speaking to me hallelujah this running prophetically is a sign of deliverance leaving the place of pain into the place of glory leaving the place of shame into the place of dignity I'm going to stretch my hands now the power of God will come on many people and they will start running hold them gently and just bring them out I decree and declare even as God has revealed to me I release that grace right now be separated right now be separated right now be separated right now be separated right now from any obstacle any condition bring a pakoskete bata bringing you shame and reproach be separated right now open your mouth and begin to declare in the name of Jesus open your mouth and begin to declare I prophesy a separation by the spirit of the living God hallelujah who is Matilda I'm hearing a name Matilda Matilda this should be a lady's name Matilda this is what I'm hearing I'm hearing a name Matilda please be sensitive we're going to pray Matilda the Lord is bringing a visitation to Matilda and her family who is victory I'm hearing the name victory not Victor victory ends with a Y victory in the name of Jesus Christ there is a strange visitation that is coming for that person please don't don't just come out at random let's let's be sure that 
victory alande shalakosiata what's your name my dear Hallelujah. Now I'm going to pray for people, but I'm seeing a woman, a lady. You had a miscarriage last week. You had a miscarriage last week. Please help them. You had a miscarriage last week. I don't know where that person is, but I want to pray for you now. Victory. You have victory? I'm seeing oil being poured on two of you. I'm going to pray for everybody, but I'm seeing oil right now. And the Lord is, I'm with that oil, I'm seeing something leaving your body. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over the victory that has come out by the power of the Holy Spirit. First two of you before I pray, I command right now, in the name of Jesus, by this oil and this mantle upon you, every demonic thing, every embargo sitting upon your destiny, I cast it out of you right now. 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 There is a lady, you had a miscarriage last week. This is what God is showing me. Please make sure you don't tell lies. We have a, a, a miscarriage last week. Who is that? What's your name? Miriam. Miriam. You had a miscarriage last week. You're married? How long? This year. This year. I'm going to pray for you. Who is miscarriage? How long? Last week. Last week. Where are you from? From Maraba. No, 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 no. Where are you from? State of origin. A do state. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I'm seeing stones around fire. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is telling me to take it away. I declare every altar that is speaking against your life. As I'm praying for her, I'm praying for someone. In the name of Jesus, anything that will not let you go, I stand prophetically and I scatter it right now. I stand prophetically and I scatter it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Help that lady, please. I decree and declare all who have had miscarriages according to the time of life. I prophesy to you right now. I don't care what the medical situation is. Return with your miracle children now. Return with your miracle children now. Who is Augustina? Augustina. I'm hearing a name Augustina. Augustina. God is bringing victory for that family. The family of Augustina. God is bringing victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is someone you have been building. This is more than seven years. I'm seeing a building and I'm seeing the number seven written on it. More than seven years it has not been completed. Whether it's an individual, whether it's a family. No matter what it is that you do, it looks like it is not completed. I want you to lift your hands. You don't have to come out. The power of God is coming upon you right now. It is the finisher's anointing. You will be surprised to see what happens. Some of you, before December, I'm standing as a pakosh keteveleketa, embrakatos keti balata. Every power 
sitting on this project and will not allow you make progress I decree and declare go forward in the name of Jesus hallelujah huh. the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm standing in front of a river please look listen carefully I'm standing in front of a river and this is what I'm seeing you would think it's fish that is coming out of the river but I'm seeing human beings tied with chains you know how fish comes out and goes back that's what I'm seeing the Lord wants to set people free now. Please listen. I'm going to, it's a massive deliverance that is going to happen now. Please hear me. I'm seeing people like you know how you are in a river and it should be fish that come. You know how fishes jump. But I'm seeing human beings tied like fishes. But they are human beings. I'm praying right now. You're about to shout Jesus. My goodness, my God. Every marine spirit. Spirits of darkness connected to the waters it was an element of creation God gave for man's advantage but has been manipulated by powers that be in the name of Jesus anyone whose destiny has been buried kept down by orchestrations of evil spirits as you shout the name Jesus may that fire come upon you and I lose you are you ready now at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I lose you now. I lose you now. Covenants and altars tied to water. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now I'm still praying in the name of Jesus whether you believe it or not listen I'm telling you when God reveals this many of you may not know the cause of the issues around your life wicked demonic patterns no hear me look up let me teach you something the Bible says in Revelations when you read 18 19 20 it says in the judgment hell gave up the dead then the Bible said the sea gave up the dead the sea has become a burial ground for many people's destinies tied down by activities of witchcraft when you read your Bible it says all of the abundance came forth out of the waters and the devil has manipulated it to destroy people I am still praying again anyone's destiny here your destiny means where God has preordained for you that has been tied, trapped down. Maritally, financially, in terms of fruitfulness, I decree and declare the spirits that are back of it be judged now. Be judged now. Be judged now. Be judged now! Be judged now! Hallelujah! Please look at me. I want to ask you a question. When Naaman washed seven times and got up and his skin became free, look up. Where did the leprosy go to? Where did the dead skin go to? The spirit of that leprosy was still hovering around. The man who Jesus told him to wash at Siloam, when he washed and he saw, where did the blindness go to? Now listen, just because people have abused all of these things through unfortunately extra biblical practices you need to have spiritual intelligence enough to understand the dynamics of commanding victory for the believer 
Are we together now? The water is a very mysterious spiritual substance because it has an expression of the Trinity too as ice, as liquid, and as gas. Water is not limited by anything, does not fear anything, does not run away from anything. Very mysterious. Father, I want to pray over chains that is holding people's progress. Chains. Chains. We're going to pray for the sick shortly. But there are many of you, you do not know why, regardless the efforts, anything you do, it looks like there is no result for it. And you are not lazy. You are not lazy. You are diligent. Some of you have been in this city for many years, and yet it looks like nothing has opened for you. Please take seriously the prayer I'm about to pray, because fire from heaven is about to fall on someone. I decree and declare right now, anyone whose destiny has been chained and hijacked by the powers that be, in the name that is above all names, my God, I'm seeing fire resting on people. I declare be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Do you believe in the power of prophecy? Listen, many of you will be surprised at the testimonies. See, you are not the only one listening. Your situations are also listening. Are we together? That means conditions also listen. Everything has breath. Everything listens. So don't think you are the only one who is here and your problems are somewhere scattered around. No, they are all listening. Did the Bible not say that when there was a conversation between the prophet and the woman, the oil and the jar, they were all part of, they were participating in the conversation. Nothing except, and he said, no, don't call that except. Go and borrow vessels and the oil will show you it was part of the conversation. There's someone here You've been having, I'm going to pray for the sick shortly. You've been having severe headache. When it comes upon you, it almost acts as if you are losing your mind. This is a very demonic thing. This is not just a headache as a result of fatigue. The power of God is coming upon you right now. Right now. Two of you are not in this auditorium. But the power of God is coming upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. In the name of Jesus. And for all of you who have come out here, you did not just come out to waste your time. I decree and declare. The same way these spirits have left you, they go for good. And for some of you, even before this service is over, your testimony begins. Deborah, 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 Deborah. Your name is Deborah? Your wife, allow him, please leave him. Deborah. Please hold the person who starts running out now. I just saw in my vision someone is running out. Hold that one person and bring the person out. Literally, like running. Just hold the person so they don't injure themselves. But bring them. I'm going to pray for you. I had in my spirit Deborah. Ah, the power of God is coming on you. Laughter. 
This is what I'm hearing for Deborah. Laughter, 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 laughter. I decree it in the name of Jesus Christ. Laughter, you are entering your season of laughter. I prophesy it and I decree and declare. You receive it by the Spirit. May it be so for you. Laughter, laughter. Anything that fights your laughter, I curse it right now. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. I prophesy as I hear in my spirit, laughter, laughter. Step into your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for a family. Oh dear. You are from Gombe State. Gombe State. Where is the family? Gombe State. Uh, ah, I'm not saying everybody from Gombe State come out. Oh, if we have that, there is. I, I'm seeing a family. Ah, uh, mother and not. Our people are already out now. What do we do? Mama, you are welcome. We'll pray. Of course, everybody wants to go forward. So once you hear a word, I will pray for you. That's, no, 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 you don't have to come. Huh? Deborah. Deborah, I already prayed for Deborah. You received by faith. Eh? We're talking of um, Gombe State. The Lord is speaking to me. I want to pray for you. Please believe in the power of God. Oh, we are not acting this thing. Go, it's a mighty visitation. God is going to give that family. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. Ah. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. Altars are breaking. No oh. Father, you spoke to me about a family in Gombe State. I'm using these ones in front as a prophetic point of contact. Listen, the power of God is going to come upon you. And everything that represents shame and reproach for that family, whether you are here represented or prophetically following online, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the power of God bring to end every activity of witchcraft now. Every activity of witchcraft now be broken, be broken. Help mama, please. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken now. The Lord is showing. I'm going to pray for you. Listen. In the name of Jesus, um, the Lord is showing me a family where the ladies don't give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Not, not necessarily in Gombe State. This is another case God is showing me. Ladies, whether they get married, they are not able to have children. And this is like a pattern. It's happened to a number of the ladies. You don't have to come out. Whether you are online or you are in here, please, I want you to believe. God is visiting people's situations. In the name of Jesus, before I finish with you, my Gombe people, any spirit that has sat on the womb of the ladies in any family and vowed that they will not give birth by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we command those altars broken now. We command those altars broken now. Now, for all of you, I know some of you, your, maybe your children or your siblings are not here since God spoke about families. As you are standing in faith, I use you as a point of contact. 
and I pray for your siblings wherever they are in this nation and across the globe between now and the end of this year return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies in the name of Jesus God bless you please return to your seat please return to your seat Please return to your seat. I'm going to pray for the sick. How many of you believe in prosperity? Financial prosperity. I know there are five levels. I'm talking about financial prosperity. I believe in it all. I don't know if you don't believe, you can, you can. It is a very bad thing to be poor. Let me just tell you straight to the point. The reason is, and remember you have been taught here, when we teach this, we are not teaching from a, an unbeliever's carnal pursuit for material things. But let me assure you by the Spirit of God, you will not be able to do much for the kingdom and for yourself. Poverty takes away dignity from the life of people. Hallelujah. There is the wisdom that brings prosperity first as a superior belief system and then an understanding of the value that you provide there is favor that ties with wisdom and brings prosperity but there is the prophetic that manages the back end of spiritual interruptions to that journey get this equation now wisdom as your belief system and as the value that you provide that is the department of wisdom there is favor programming men and systems to respond favorably to you then there is the prophetic dimension are we together if you lack any one of these three you will be poor if you have a superior belief system you have value alone you will be very limited you must have favor because at the back end of what brings you wealth are men and if those men don't like you and don't believe you, you can be valuable and you will still remain there. Are we together? If you have favor in your life and you do not have wisdom, you will only have circumstantial wealth, as important as it is. Because men will come, but wisdom, your, your mindset will keep driving away what favor puts in your hand. But if you have wisdom and have favor as powerful as it is, and you do not have the prophetic, you will keep building and crashing. Because one activity of demon spirits, one activity of the realm of the spirit will rubbish your wisdom completely. You can impart the spirit of wisdom, but it takes time to build belief systems. And that's what we do every week. As for favor, there is a grace and there is an understanding that brings favor. But this prophetic dimension is my assignment. I'm going to pray for the sick, but I want to speak it. Listen, by the grace of God, I vowed before God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant alone and then become irresponsible in every area of their life. God is not glorified if you cannot pay your children's school fees. God is not glorified if you sit down the time you should be spending building your spiritual life. You are praying for rent. No. God is not glorified if you have to tell lies and lie that you are not in the house because the person you are owing has come to knock and afterwards you ask for forgiveness, then you lie again. It is the assignment of the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit to provide for you the resources that it takes to prosper. Listen to me. Men can prosper. I know that there are this ministry has very successful people at different levels building transgenerational wealth is more than just having money in your account building transgenerational wealth is rising to a point where you build systems that can secure your life that even in famine you will laugh this balloon success of rising up today and anything that happens across the world you are shaking that's not the kingdom's way at every level we can still rise higher and for some of you who are saying i am comfortable your understanding is poor as far as kingdom advance is concerned because until the kingdom has benefited from your resources you are not prosperous 
for as long as your resources ends up with you your comfort yes but your comfort alone wrong for the sake of thy prosperity I desire your house I'm going to speak over your life before we pray for the sick please I plead with you in the name of Jesus if you ever believe and respect the prophetic believe this declaration just believe it and insult me that I'm stupid afterwards if it does not happen but please believe it father in the name of Jesus Christ I cry unto you you are a covenant keeping God I have vowed and you have agreed with it that we will raise a people of influence Lord there are people here who love you sincerely but this financial embarrassment has tied their lives down I stand by the prophetic in the name of Jesus for as many who believe in this grace and whose heart is open I prophesy to you the grace that lifts men bringing them out of financial shame to a life of dignity that allows you to serve the Lord receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now businesses receive that grace now families receive that grace now territories receive that grace now anyone who is in any financial situation you are owing you lost money you are in business there's some kind of financial trouble in the name of Jesus like Elijah prophesied over the 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 woman in Zarephath I speak to your life may God raise men to bring you out of that situation may God raise men to bring you out of that situation Apostle, what do I do to prosper? May my God show you in a dream. In the name of Jesus, the area connected to your wealth, I ask my God to open your eyes in the vision of the night and show you where he has kept the wine and the oil for you. Can I declare favor over you? If it happens only once in your life, it is not favor. There is a big difference between breakthrough and favor. Breakthrough is when the obstacles and the limitations that impede you are taken away. Favor is when under regardless what conditions, you begin to have predictable positive results. God compelling men to help you. Listen, I submit to you and at the risk of sounding proud, I know what I'm saying. Forgive me if my statement or anything sounds like boasting or arrogance. I know what it means to walk in the favor of God. I'm praying for you such as I have. In the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God, the one who favors men. I'm praying for you. Let this mantle rest upon your head. May this mantle rest upon your head. May this mantle rest upon your head. Sincerely believers hear me, let me tell you the truth. Most of the things that are written in your prayer request are within the department of favor to give you that testimony, if you will be honest. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but most people, there are those who are not sick in body except they are standing for others. But there is a disease of the absence of favor. You can know that a man's life is not favored, even if you are making money. You should know by now that favor is far more than money. You can have financial resources and not be favored. The difference will be clear. 
The proof of favor is more than money. Access to the heart of men. That's the proof of favor. You can have money and everybody hates you. There are many things money cannot do. I've always prayed for people and you've heard me say it. That may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money. Hmm. Money can fail. It's a piece of paper. Real wealth is men. Not things. Men. The only reason why things have value is because of men who value them. Please learn this. High level spiritual intelligence. Real wealth is men. When God connects your heart to men, he has connected your heart to things and he has connected your heart to money. But you can be connected to money, connected to things, it will kill you, destroy you. Who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. I repeat, real wealth is men. In the multitude of men, not things, is a king's honor. Somebody who can remember you and stand for you and see to it that under their watch you actualize destiny unhindered by any kind of thing, whether financial or systemic limitations. Now that is wealth. Don't get into that illusion that money does anything. No. People misunderstand the scripture that says money answereth all things. What does the Bible mean by money? Because at those times, it was not your idea of money that they had. Real wealth is men. That's why Jesus did not come to die for things. Creation was part of the beneficiaries of salvation, but principally, it was for men. If you have money, use the money to build relationships. If you have money and the only thing you have is a house, and you say, I have an estate, you will be surprised. Estates don't visit you when you are in the sick bed. Estates don't say, I love you. Estates don't say, I'm praying for you. The fruit in your shop will not look at you and say, good morning, sir. Don't be carried away by mundane things and ignore men. Real wealth is men. Let's pray for healing. Please lay your hands. You're trusting God for a miracle. And while I'm praying for the sick, please begin to submit your request. Let me give you one or two minutes. If you have not written your prayer request, please write it very quickly. And then we're going to pray for the sick. Let's do it very quickly. Ushers, while we are praying, if you've written your prayer request, pass it to your left or right for sake of time, and there will be an official picking it. Let me give you one minute to quickly write, and then we'll stand up to pray for the sick. Most times our time is so limited before we do anything, it's already gone. And um, so, very quickly. One minute, write your request. In case your faith was not enlarged enough to write certain things, now you've been convicted, write them. Write them again. And I will not be silent. I Worship. Write them with joy in your heart, knowing that there is a God that answers prayers. One more time.
as you drop your prayer request, I want you to believe by faith that what you are dropping in the name of Jesus, the only other thing you will pick are your testimonies. If you're done, please stand. I want to pray for the sick now. Till Jesus comes, I believe in healing miracles. I believe in the power of God. Why should you die before your time? When... What's that song? There is a fountain filled with blood that flows lay your hands now believing anywhere you're trusting God for a miracle I'm seeing people lifting the photos of their loved ones I'm seeing others connecting by faith there are people following from hospitals having death sentences it is for your sake that God sent us to be channels of healing and miracles I believe in miracles I really do now here's what will happen I'm going to pray for the sick now and expect the power of God like I taught you earlier to rest upon you if you are the one standing for yourself or for your loved one who you are believing for a miracle are we together the moment that happens very very briefly very very briefly we're going to allow a few people and it doesn't mean that you have to you must have been healed tonight if in the course of the service the week the power of God has touched you and there is a healing miracle you can join them will take for a very few minutes just a few people and those who are outside and all the overflows uh, would like to hear what God is doing with them too so if there's anyone who is healed there and they're coming please ushers protocol allow them provided they rush fast let's have a few notable testimonies to honor Jesus and then we'll pray over the requests and I'll speak over your life hallelujah please stand if it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. And I want you to agree as I pray. For those who are following from hospitals, other people carrying their medical reports, there is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. He's not about to stop doing it. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God, who gives men the power to heal the sick. I decree and declare right now, so many phones lifted representing people, some following, some demonic conditions, some death sentences. In the name of Jesus, the spirit that is back of that infirmity, whatever it is called, I invoke the name that is above every other name and even the blood of the eternal covenant that altar that speaks above and against every negative altar I command that those spirits depart right now yeah. depart right now yeah. depart right now yeah. now I decree and declare in the name of Jesus for all those who are sick, it doesn't matter how long and it does not matter what the problem is. I stretch my hands prophetically and I declare, be healed now. Let the life of God surge into your body now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bone conditions 
anyone having a bone condition I declare be healed now anyone lying down on the sick bed I forbid you from dying in the name of Jesus HIV be healed now cancer be healed now tumors and growths be healed now partial or complete blindness eyes be open now ears be unstopped now you heard about the testimony of the lady that God gave a brand new womb in the name of Jesus any organ that is failed or failing we command a brand new organ now peptic ulcer be healed recurrent migraines be healed blood conditions be healed There's someone you have a serious problem smelling it's just you know how it's like you put pepper in someone's nose and that stink that's literally how it is for you God is showing me in the name of Jesus you are healed right now the Lord is showing me someone you usually are a straight person you stand very straight but something began to happen to you and you are bending over it's like something is bending you over in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that you are straightened now someone's kneecap you've had severe pain around your kneecap in Jesus name may the power of God touch you There's someone you are you are going you are going to go for a surgery I'm seeing that you are supposed to go for a surgery in two weeks I don't know what the condition is but it had to it has to do with your abdominal region in the name of Jesus may the power of God touch you right now there's someone you have severe breathing problems um, you've not gone to the hospital for any check but you've had severe sometimes you sit down and you are gasping for breath you thought it was because you are adding weight but that thing is still happening to you in the name of Jesus Christ severe breathing whatever is wrong with your respiratory system we correct it now by the power of God you have a problem with your the lumbar area the power of God is touching you right now you almost you cannot bend properly when you bend you feel severe pain the Lord is touching you right now now whether I mention your case or not I want you to believe right now in the name of Jesus there is a woman you are not here in Nigeria your daughter has kidney stones this is what I'm seeing the power of God is touching that little girl right now. I'm hearing the name bronchitis, bronchitis. In the name of Jesus, whether here or anywhere following across the globe, I declare be healed now. I'm seeing a woman, in fact, I'm seeing in my vision, a woman is holding another woman and that woman is suffering from hypertension. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of God that woman is healed now. If there's anybody here who came with a mad person, maybe a mad person having any kind of um, psychosomatic disorder, any kind of, you know, issue that has to do with madness, in Jesus' name we declare they are restored now. They are restored now. Amen. Repeated malaria, month after month. You treat it, it returns. You treat it, it returns. In Jesus' name, be healed now. Amen. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit and then the Lord is showing me someone um, not to be embarrassed but you've not even gone to the toilet in days because you have a very acute I don't know if you've gone to the hospital but you have an an embarrassingly painful expression of pile this is is, is this thing with what I'm seeing is not even just like pile it's like a swelling even though I'm praying for you but it will be wise to at least try to see a doctor because what you know what I'm seeing is not very good is is wise and I've taught you here we believe in the healing power of God but we are responsible people you have a situation that calls for concern there are many many doctors that are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit they can be able to examine you even if it needs a miracle they'll be honest enough to tell you it is wiser to at least get that perspective than to you know irresponsibly sh shrug it away and yet you are not releasing your faith for that person I'm praying right now this night this moment may the power of God touch you now in the name of Jesus Christ someone's left ear left ear you hear a very you know very irritating sound and then that's it I'm praying for you be healed now and pains around the body any part of the body whatsoever be healed in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I speak healing for you now 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 this life that I am is a life of God in me. This life that I am is a life. This life that I am is a life of God in me. This life that I am. So away, so away, so away. Help those under the anointing. Now in Jesus' name I declare be healed. Here's what I want you to do for me. We have just about five minutes for you. I want you to check yourself whether you are outside any of the overflow our global family and those within here the moment you find out that there is a miracle for you check yourself do what you couldn't do before and we're going to take a few people you find out that the power of God has touched you you need to see the doctors the medical people you can go out to our medical stand very quickly and have yourself checked and I want you to return very quickly now please the moment you find out that a miracle has happened I don't want you to sit back it is important that we seal your miracle I want you to check yourself and make your way right to the front even though I know that our time is gone but it's good we take even if it's just one or two testimonies very quickly let's celebrate them as they check themselves there's a miracle that is happening God is healing people make your way to the front koinonia is this the best that you can do don't get too used to miracles those who are coming from outside, please let them come very quickly. Let's have a few miracles, your name, and then we'll seal that miracle by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus, for a man of God who came here, make sure that you receive the final impartation because this is what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. We'll take a few. Um, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, wave it so that someone will see it. Just wave it very high above your head and someone will pick it up and bring it right here and then we'll pray. The moment the power of God has touched you, you've confirmed that you have a miracle, we'll have a few testimonies in the name of Jesus. Are you ready, sir? Okay, once we get a confirmation, yes, sir. Praise the 
Thanks a lot. My name is Ori. I came with a toothache. It's been on and off for a couple of months. You came with a toothache? Yes. Uh huh. And even when I inhale air, sometimes the tooth will start to ache. Yes. But now if I inhale, I don't feel the pain. Completely. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we celebrate your miracle and we declare that it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Yes, please. Apostle, I have an interesting one here. Wow. Go ahead. I've been, since morning I came here, I couldn't stand up from the chair myself, and I've been managing rheumatoid arthritis for over, almost two years now, but just now I could stand up. You could stand now. Look at this. Koinonia, you are so used to miracles. Watch this. Look at how, for how many years? For two years. Over now. two years. She could not stand on her own. My God, can you walk? Yes. Go ahead, walk. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that I have is the life of God. In the name of Jesus, I declare perfection. I cause rheumatoid arthritis. You go back to hell where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Can we have one or two there very quickly? Yeah, Apostle, our brother came in from the UK. You mentioned the case of people with evil smell. He has had this since 2015. When people come What, what happened to him? Have... Give him the mic. Quickly. No, don't hold it. Just speak. So actually, I came down yes, uh, from the UK uh, three days ago to come and see the man of God. And yes. You mentioned my case that... Uh, there are somebody that they invoke an uh, evil smell or strange smell upon. Yes. And that's what exactly they've been doing to me about 15, uh, 15 since 2015. Um, even this morning when I came, so it's like I, I've been mocked with it. When I'm, uh, when I'm here, you see everybody will smell. What happened to you now? It's like I, um, I, I don't know. You're completely it. free from it. In the name of Jesus, that demonic smell leaves you never, never to return. Isaac blessed his son and said, the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Yes, please. Open up her left ear since when she was small. She can hear with the hear now. Can you imagine? Yes, Which of them? My left ear. Come on now. Come it on, Koinonia. very hot. <laughs> You're together. Oh, husband. Tell us about it. She's going to... She, from when she was small, she had an accident and they had to do an operation on that year. You married her like that? Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. What I meant was when you married her, that condition was there. Yes, yes. My God. Look at this. Close the one, close the one that, that is working. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on now. Look at this. She's even excited. Do you know what it means? Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know what it means to leave home and say, I'm going to church? And then one year, you're already used to it. How long has this been? I was 13. You were 13? I think I was 16. Then I had a, a laboratory accident. When I was working in the lab in the university, something entered my ears, um, pseudomonia, and grew in my ears. Since then, I had operation, but still I can't hear very well on the left side. When you were praying, my ear got very hot, and then I felt something crawling out of my ear. I kept on checking, and there's nothing. In the name of Jesus, you are healed and perfected forever. Congratulations to you and your husband. Let's celebrate them as they go. Yes, please. Another case of the opening of left ear too. Uh, mommy, opening of left ear. Mommy, what happened? Uh, for about two months now, my left ear yes. has been noise. Noise? Noise. Uh -huh. it's, it's causing something like vertigo. I, can't, I couldn't walk. Even here, since I came here, I've not been able to walk on my own. Some people can testify to that. They saw me that they were holding me. But they were holding you? They were holding me to come to walk. I and right walk. now, walk.
It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Walking in the light. It's for love singing that song now. Oh, walk, 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 walk. walk. Jesus, return back and tell God's people Jesus healed you. God bless you. Show with kneecap, and kneecap is also healed too since 2013. Your kneecap? Yes. What kind of a demonic? Since 2013. And now is you're healed in the name totally. of Jesus Christ. Totally. totally. Completely healed. You go and tell them Jesus healed you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Apostle, it, another opening of ear since when he was small. Opening of his left ear. Your left ear? Yes, sir. Like, then took something in my, in my ear. If, you want, if someone wants to talk to what me. What happened to you? Then took something in my ear. If someone wants to talk to me, I have to turn my right ear. Oh, my God. Close that one. Say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. How long has this been? 23, sir. Huh? 23, sir. 23 years? Yes, sir. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this demonic thing will never return again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, some of these miracles look very common, but you may never understand the discomfort that the people healed go through. Hallelujah. I promise that we'll have a few. Let's see. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Okay. Uh, it actually happened when you... Straight to the point. Yes. yes what uh, happened? I was... I, I went up to eat myself in the night. So, uh, I, feel, I felt as if something entered me. Since then, I had these pains around my abdomen and my private part. So, I just kept it to myself. I will book it immediately, but it was when I was driving that day. So as I came here, it was disturbing me. I was going out to ease myself. Go. So before the ministration of the uh, prayer for healing, so I said that was the last time I was going out. And if I go out to pee, it will be like yellow and it will be smelly. But after the prayer, I went out to ease myself. And it was completely like in the name of Jesus Christ, it will never return to you again. Let's celebrate Jesus. So, so we have an interesting one here. So it's not for the mother, but for the baby. My baby has been having noisy breath since a week after I gave Noisy birth. breath? Yes. How old is the baby? He's one year, few weeks. Okay. And during the last miracle service, I was believing God for it, but the devil was testing my faith. The noisy breath continued a little. Mm. Even now, he was sleeping and... I was feeling the vibration, but immediately you prayed. You prayed. About the respiratory issue. It stopped. Completely. Yes. I cannot feel the vibration on his back again. And he's sleeping for over a year. I, I don't sleep at night. Struggling to What's your baby's him. name? Caris. Caris. Look at what one prayer of faith. One prayer of faith. Only God knows what this child will grow up to become. You can know how many fruits come out of a tree. There are many, but they are countable. But you can never tell how many trees can come out from a fruit or a seed. Father, we pray for baby Caris. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. And the mother, may God bless you for standing in faith for our baby. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. Apostle, I had a pain on this right leg, so I saw an orthopedic for it. So once this leg started getting better, this leg started having issues. Mm. So for more than a month now, like I cannot, I could, when I'm walking, you can visibly see me limping. So okay. but when the word came that some, God is healing someone with a kneecap issue, the, the pain just left. Completely like walk. Look at this. 
What you've waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has Look at this. Koinonia, celebrate Jesus. He will never return to you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, several testimony here were just lumping them. Severe headache, difficulty in bending. For the past three weeks, he could bend very well. Now, now you're bending. Pain. Congratulations. God bless you. Abdominal pain for the past one month now. The pain is going to disappear. Abdominal pain. That devil leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. She had an accident some years ago and then she couldn't so when you gave the word of people with lumbar challenge how long under the just mic. just put the mic on her help her the power of god is still on her how long my dear huh? since october 2020 that was when a 350 lexus hit me from behind a lexus hit you <laughs> and what happened to you after then she couldn't bend i couldn't bend I, it, if I want to bend, I'm having pain. Bend now. Any pain? I command that devil to leave you. He will never, never, never return to you again. You are protected on the road. You will not be a victim of any accident. Difficulty in, in breathing. In breathing. For the past two months. You mentioned the case. He thought he would because he was happy. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare healing for you right now. Yes. Healing by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Also and chest pain. Also and chest pain. You are healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. What's the so, Apostle, we had a case of um, fracture on the leg. Fracture? How long? Last year, December. 11th December, last year. What happened? I, was, I went to market on our way back. I was hit by a car on the express. Let me prophesy over your life. In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare you are protected from accidents. You will not die from anybody's mistake. Your children are protected and covered. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. Yes, my dear. So, what happened to you? So, my leg got broken into two. It was completely like this, not like this again. Your leg? Yes, sir. This leg. You how did you went to the hospital? Yes, sir. I even did um, X-ray on the leg. And then what happened? So they treated the leg, but it wasn't okay. I couldn't run completely. I don't run before I come here. I don't, I can't squat. If I squat, the leg is pinning me. And when I'm walking, I can't walk fast. I have to walk slow. I'm limping very badly. And the leg, I feel pain from here and here. What's your name? Keziah. There are people who know about this? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, oh, there are so many people. You know about her situation. Run. But this God is mighty. Oh. Look at this. Look at, she's squatting. In the name of Jesus Christ, this remains perfected in your life forever. Amen. amen and amen. Let's see if we can take two more. My sincere apologies. You know, I keep looking at the time. Apostle, yes. you gave a very prophetic word of knowledge regarding someone with a mental case, with a migraine that causes... Like, yes. That makes me feel as if I was wrong or I should take off my clothes. What's your name? Venash. Okay, what happened to you? So I came with the headache. It's as if something moves on my head. And makes you want to run? Yes, want to move or want to lose my mind. So if immediately you prophesy that whoever has a headache, immediately you made the prophecy. I, I don't feel it anymore. I feel normal. I don't, I don't, I don't feel it. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sincere, okay, let's take that last one. My apologies. Please allow me to pray for the remaining. Um, the, the meetings are always available for you to testify. We have to work with time. My sincere apologies. Miracle services usually would require an extended time to celebrate what Jesus is doing. Yes. Mine is waist pain. Like, a, yes, they hit me something on my waist. 
Like how long has this been? Six months. And right now. Like I'm feeling serious pain. So when don't go. Praying, Just stand. Let me pray first. Yes. As you were praying, I went outside. I slept on the ground so that my waist here we touch the floor, the coldness of the floor. I felt it. So when I checked, I felt that the pain, everything is gone. So I'm gone free. completely. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Unfortunately, because of our time, my sincere apologies. We may not be able to take the testimonies one by one, but we glorify Jesus. Listen, every testimony is proof that God is alive. I have taught you it is proof that God loves. And as simple as this is because of the kind of grace that God has given us, we do not take it for granted. It is the workings of God. No man is able to do this except God be with him. And so, Father, we rejoice over these testimonies. We thank you for confirming your word with signs following. We know that there are several others who have been healed, touched, blessed. And for all of them, I decree and declare that you will return with your testimonies. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please rise up on your feet and stretch your hands towards me. Everyone, please stand. Rise up on your feet. Stretch your hands towards me. If we still have other requests, please let's have it very quickly so that we'll pray. Begin to speak over your prayer request. Father, this is a representation of my faith. The Bible mandates that we present our request and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this is a supernatural miracle for me. Go ahead. This is the ninth month. It's your time to deliver. Is someone praying? In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God. Shapranda kaskote preti ke pala hasi ya pashati ka pala kuziata pa. Embra katus ko zebra katus shakete place. Father, turn situations around. Visit families. Visit businesses visit ministries let your people experience the touch of god i'm laying my hands and releasing the anointing upon this request unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come is someone praying Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, your people are walking in their testimonies. They are walking in the manifestation of the word. Never again, oh God, answer your people. Turn our mornings into dancing. Take away the garment of shame and reproach so that our glory will praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you because the Bible says to be anxious for nothing. But it says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says to make your request known unto God. We have brought this as a representations of our faith. Believing that you are able. Father, I bow my knees upon this request as your servant. And I pray that from the abundance of your mercy and power, grant answers to this request. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let your crying come to an end. Amen. Let shame come to an end. Amen. Let reproach come to an end. Amen. Let it be a season of joy and laughter. Amen. A season of lifting and restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I was in House on the Rock last week. And um, I taught on the teaching helped by God. It's on our, our YouTube page. You can listen to it. And in that teaching, I taught that there are three ways that God extends his help to man. Number one is by granting men access to his mercy. Number two, through the ministry of men. And then number three, through the ministry of the helper the paraclete that we call the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
So God is able to show men help by granting them mercy. Number two, God is able to use men. The man at the pool of Bethesda, when Jesus said, what do I do? His prayer was, I have no man. That was his prayer. I do not have any man who will come and stand to advocate and help me. Most of these requests here you see are men dependent. It will take the, the, the synergy between the power of God and the ministry of men for this to happen. I said all that because I want to call forth prophetically the men that God will use to provide speedy answers. I decree and declare everyone mandated by God to respond to any or all your prayer requests. I declare from this night, may their ministry in your life be activated. If it is a job, the person who should talk to the person who should talk to the person who will grant you the job, we activate their ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone who has been ordained of God to bring you intervention and to send you help, we activate their ministry speedily. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of priesthood and the prophetic, I prophesy that every request here written is hereby turned into a harvest of testimonies. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let me speak over your life finally. Come to Jesus if you are not born again. I'm about to make an altar call um, and then I speak. I think I should just make the altar call before I speak. Keep standing. Please don't sit. Keep standing. We're almost done. No, please, let's not move around. You need Jesus Christ. Apostle, I'm coming here for the first time and I confess that I need Jesus or I need a restoration of my spiritual life. Please, make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only begotten Son. Don't let anybody laugh at you. Make your way to the front. Whosoever believes in Him, carry your bags, carry your Bibles, everything you came to church with. Please, come out and make Jesus Lord of your life. Carry your bags if you can, carry your Bibles, and everything you came to church with. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? Come and stand before Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm shy. We're encouraging you. Come, make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Make your way to the front. Mean it with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is convicting you. He's telling you, you need to make it right. All the overflows, all those who are viewing, watching from across the globe, it is never too late to make it right with Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you come. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making this noble decision. This is one of the reasons why God, the reasons why God anointed us to be able to help people experience Jesus. We are very passionate about people's encounter with Jesus because no matter what else you receive, without Jesus, you only receive something very, very temporary. Hallelujah. The greatest gift God gave man is not breakthrough, it's not favor, it's not lifting, it's not healing. He gave us Jesus. Hallelujah. And so if you receive every other thing and reject Jesus, you did not really receive God's gift. I salute you for making this noble decision. Some of you for the first time, some of you are rededicating your lives. I just request that you mean it from the depth of your heart. If you're joining them, please run. I'm about to lead them to pray. And those who are following online, please join us as we pray. All of the overflows do same. Don't stand in front and just murmur and don't mean what you are saying. No, standing is not what makes you saved. We only call you so that you can be separated, mean business with Jesus and then to be led for follow-up. So please do make sure that you mean it with Jesus Christ. This is the house of God. Thank you very much. Lift your right hand, please, high above your head. And I want you to say this 
from the depth of your heart. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I confess that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my King. I declare that the power of sin, right, um, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I begin a journey with God. Amen. Father, thank you for these ones who have come presenting themselves before you. The Bible declares that as many who will come, you will in no wise cast away. I, I receive them by faith on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and I declare that your sins are forgiven. Let tonight begin a new um, journey in your Christian experience in the name of Jesus. Like you have confessed, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you very much for your courage. God bless you. May I please request that you follow the counselors to my right, which is your left. There are a few people who would just have a word with you very briefly, and then they would speak over your life and you'll be done. Let's celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, um, we're starting a very, very special series from next week, God Granting Us Grace. Um, yes. It is going to be life-defining, and let me encourage you to be a, be a steward. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.